Namaskar learners. I am Professor Nishi Sethi, retired from Chaudhary Charan Singh, Haryana Agriculture University, Hisar, Haryana, as Associate Director, Training from Directorate of Extension Education. So we have already discussed planning and scripting parts of the educational video preparation in my earlier module. And in this particular module, we have we will discuss about recording and on-camera presentation techniques for video production because actual production starts at this stage. So we may call it also production phase, actual production phase. And the objectives of this module are to sensitize teachers, participants, viewers or learners, whosoever is watching this program about the technical details of the recording and educational video and also to make teachers acquainted with the skills of preparation of the video film so that they should not hesitate in making a video film. Thus, we are going to discuss about the sources of visuals for recording a video film, that is on-camera presentation techniques for video production, guidelines for better video recording, and once you have planned your video film and written its script, the next step is to record your video. So recording is the stage where all the visual as well as the oral elements described in the script are actually collected. The recording process sometimes takes a lot of time as the recording may be spread over the days, months and even seasons and at various places also. It is important that you should be very clear about the approach or the treatment you want to select for your video lesson. I have already discussed in my earlier module about the different treatments which you can be give to your video lesson but generally two approaches are commonly used. One approach is to record the lesson in instructor's voice and supported by the visuals wherever required. Two or more instructors can also cover different aspects of the topic for just for the sake of variety and to bring more interest in that video lesson. So in this other approach, the visu uh, visual portions are recorded as per the convenience, not necessarily in which it is written in the script. All these visual bits called shots are rearranged during edited, editing as per the original script. The commentary is recorded separately and this is dubbed in the video. This process is called the voice over commentary. Whatever approach you adopt, but care should be taken that instructor's face is not shown for more than 15 to 20 percent of the total duration of your video lesson. It is also essential that the instructor has a personality that is presentable. There are three important sources of visuals for recording of video film, and they are number one is the graphic then short and then composition. So we'll discuss them. The graphics, graphics are mainly the maps, diagrams, illustrations, super titles, photographs, animations, etc. whatsoever we use to intersect in between our video film. Then apart from moving images and sound recording, educational video makes liberal use of still images, graphics and animations, still photographs may be used when no video camera can reach a correspondent subject. A still photograph may also be used to show historically notable person and event or in any place where it aids the video lesson. Photos may be recorded with the standard video camera or the photos can be placed on a special motion control device which allows precise computer controlled positioning. Whether shot is in the field or in the studio, the camera operator might zoom, pan or tilt while recording the images. The director may use portions of this video or may digitally store some selected frames for insertion into the final video lesson because they look better as compared to the still picture. So if there is a motion that will look better. Graphics are used to report on financial markets, labor statistics, crop reports, uh, municipal budgets and other instances where tabular data or charts are the best choice for explaining a story element. In video film, graphics are displayed while the reporter 
or the teacher continues to read the script. The graphics includes fonts, titles, convey worthy information, even the names and the titles. Animations can help where camera cannot reach or your camera cannot record the things. Animation is an effective tool for communicating views of a natural disaster or a tragic accident like a plane crash. Animation helps in explaining a complex scientific process, economic or political polling trends to illustrate news about space, flights and many other appropriate uses. Even meteorologists make use of simple and complex animations to show the path of storms. Whatsoever graphic you are using, the director, the teacher must make an evaluation as to the suitability and effectiveness of each specific visual to be used. Guidelines that can help and which can be memorized easily are A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And A stands for aspect ratio, B stands for bleed area, C stands for contrast, D stands for detail and essential area, feeling of director and lastly glare. As far as the spec ratio is concerned, this is the ratio of the screen that is 2 units in length and 3 units in width. So this is the ratio of your TV screen. While preparing any graphic, we must adhere to this ratio. And this, there is a logic behind it because we visualize everything with our two eyes. So we can cover much more material width wise as compared to the length wise. When we are visualizing the things length wise, it requires more eye jerks. So it is better to adhere to this ratio. Then comes the bleed area. Bleed area is the area around the graphic which is not covered in the picture but it gives a breathing space to your photographer while capturing the graphic. Contrast is the colors most accepted by the camera. Keeping some contrast is always desirable, but it should not be sharp contrast or contrast within the pastel colors as colors like uh, light gray, brown and light blue. So they look similar. Sharp contrast are always preferred. Detail means the words given in a row. Don't keep more than seven words in a row and seven lines in a slide. The lines and font selection should be such which should be easily readable. And avoid use of irregular lines as after getting it intensified, they look more irregular. And essential area is the area where we want the focus of your viewers and the focus can be depicted with the help of even the pointer. Feeling of the director is also equally important because we must also be considered as sometimes the producer cannot perceive some of the things which the eyes of the director can see while recording. Glare should be avoided by analyzing the visual on different angles. If need be, sprinkle the powder to avoid that particular glare. Then the next thing with this we have discussed is the graphic part. Next is the shot. Shot is basically the visual element in a video program production. A shot is a single and continuous image taken by a camera. It can be shot as 1 by 25th of a second. The length of the single video frame that is. Or as long as the length of an entire program. But we never, never ever use these two kinds of lens because in one second 25 frames go in such a way that it looks as as the moving video so we cannot ever use that 1 by 25th shot so we never use that even for the sake of variety we always uh, recommend that we should use three cameras from the sides and we can use different angles uh, so the one long shot is not very desirable we generally assemble a number of different shots together into a sequence. So proper breakdown of shots and appropriate selection of a shot size can improve the quality of the video production, video program. Remember that a video screen is very small as compared to that of the film. And so it is not ideal to show people in very uh, long shots and long shot, very long shots or long shots for a very long time. 
it is good idea to establish the scheme or the location with the long shot for about 10 seconds and then cut to the medium close-ups, close-ups and big close-ups. And stress on the facial expression is there when we are showing the big close-up or the extreme close-up. Video is uh, after all a close-up medium, so we should prefer the close-up shots. And generally medium shots are much more preferred for the, video, for the video films, whereas the extreme shots can be kept but for not for the longer period of time. Long shot or full shot with people is a shot from the top of their head to the, their feet. A medium shot is normally a shot from the waist uh, up and medium shot uh, close up is a shot crop between the shoulders and the belt line. A close up is the most desirable to catch changing facial expressions which are important to following a conversation. Extreme close ups are reserved for dramatic impact or if we are showing some demonstration so then also we use these things. The extreme close up shot may show just the eyes of an individual. All of these and designations can also apply to objects. We must ensure that cuts are never given on the joints. The third thing is the composition. We have already discussed graphics, then shots, and the third thing is the composition. Composition is basically the artistic and meaningful positioning of all the pictorial elements within the frame of our shot. So it should be aesthetically pleasing to the eye proper balance, proper use of line, mass, color and movement and it should visualize, uh, visually provide the dramatic emphasis, significant relationships, the mood and the meaning of the scene. An important function of the composition is to focus the attention of the audience to the point of the shot where we desire emphasis. Then comes the on-camera presentation techniques for video production. So there are some basic techniques that will help you become an effective on-camera presenter. If you are telling a story or you are interviewing a person, then presenting on-camera is like telling a story. It has a good beginning, middle and an ending. Whether it's announcing, reporting, interviewing and live at the scene, commentary, simulation or voiceover narration, the beginning of the story during an interview is when you introduce your guest to the viewers. Include the guest name, title, one or two important items that the viewer should know about the guest and why this particular guest is being interviewed. In the middle of the story, the what, where, when, why, who and how are presented to the viewers. So this is also known as the five W's and one H. The key is elaboration and detail. For example, interview questions allow a guest to share information with viewers. But only if you ask open-ended questions that need more than yes or no or one or two word answers. I will give you an example. If you ask how long you have been a teacher, it's a poor question. And good question can be, can you tell us how you got interested in being a teacher? It's good idea to write down interview questions and discuss them with the production team beforehand. The more interviews you do, the better you become at writing good open-ended questions. The end of the story should leave viewers feeling satisfied that they have the whole story and that you enjoy telling it to them. And then briefly summarize the story and always thank the guest at the end of an interview and end it was with the tag that is your name and the name of the program. It's better to write your own script in your own words after sufficient research about the subject which will automatically build your confidence. Then comes the display camera presence when you are displaying yourself in front of the camera. The second own camera technique is camera presence. That is when you look at the camera and when you look at someone or something else. And don't stare at the camera the entire time. Make eye contact with the appropriate audience, camera, fellow talent or guest. And talking on camera is just like a conversation with the friends. 
and camera is just there to capture it. When speaking to the viewers, look at the camera lens. When talking to the other talent or the guest, look at the guest and speak to them. Use cue cards or a teleprompter to avoid rustling noises from a paper script. And so you can look directly at the audience while reading. And memorize a few single lines to introduce the segment. For interview, memorize your introductions, questions and conclusions and prepare your guests by sharing questions before the interview. When others are speaking on screen, not occasionally and showing interest, looking away or down at script makes you look uninterested in the own screen. Conversation in an interview, don't look back at the camera until the conclusion of the interview, look at the guest as you thank them. Then slowly turn to the camera as you begin your tag. Facial expressions are very important. Gestures should be used effectively in the communication process. And then your neat physical appearance is also very important. Uh, avoid use of uh, excess hair oil and wash your face to avoid glare of natural oils. And makeup can be used and, and there is necessity to use sometimes the makeup. Otherwise, it also gives glare. I mean, your natural uh, oils can give the glare. So visual aids, samples, models, working models, specimen, etc. And make your program interesting so we can use them also. And these should be precise to the point and drawn and colored with sharp colors. Your pronunciation should be very clear, very audible and proper speed should be maintained that should neither be very fast nor be very slow and uh, let your voice have vitality, vigor, energy and enthusiasm. If you'll speak with enthusiasm that will automatically convey to your audience. So whenever sitting in front of the camera maintain good posture, don't slouch or hunch over the microphone especially if sitting so project positive image smile avoid distracting mannerism uh, such as playing with your hair or eyelashes or touching face or clothing or uh, playing with the paperweight something like that so these are the mannerisms we should certainly avoid they distract the attention of your viewers so then comes the use of microphone another part of the camera presence is using a microphone properly don't hold a microphone if you're holding an extra microphone over your mouth and covering part of your face. Hold it at least six inches from your mouth, just below the chin level. Speak into the top of the microphone. If you turn away from the camera, bring the microphone with you so you continue speaking into it. And during an interview with a single microphone, use the arm next to the guest to hold the microphone so you don't reach across your body when you move the microphone for the guest to speak. Caller mics are better choice, of course, but we should always be careful that the microphone should not cover your face at least. And then comes the dress for the camera eye. Visual appeal is uh, just as critical as content. So dressing to appeal to the eye of the camera is the fourth technique of video presentation. Presenter facing the camera need to dress professionally as if making a speech in front of the public because that is exactly what a video presentation is. However, a camera sees differently than the human eye. So here are some of the points uh, which we must keep in mind that dress properly, appropriately for your video topic Clothing colors should be pastel, pastels or soft colors like grays, blues, greens, even maroon. No white, black or red. But it also depends upon the background where you are recording. So it should, uh, we should consider that also. Then white reflects too much light towards the camera. So making flesh look too dark and black looks like a hole to the camera and distorts uh, perspective. Uh, to the camera, red bleeds the outside edges and appears to jump out of the camera. So choose small or muted patterns, bold stripes or plates are visually distracting. And also avoid uh, big shiny jewelry 
the background that the camera sees adds visual interest. So don't just uh, stand in front of the flat wall. Have something pertinent to the content of the presentation in the background. Rehearse your script. Rehearsals are required if you want to be comfortable on the camera. Print out the script to take home and practice. Practice scripts several times. Practice aloud, not silently or in whisper. Be sure you can pronounce all words, especially people's names. The key to creating an educational video in which you seem like an expert is to be confident in your message. So practice in front of a mirror with no one around to look. It can be a good way to iron and kinks and gain confidence. Then practice with a friend and have her give you feedback. It may be beneficial to have another person listen to your script before you film it and publish it. If possible, practice speaking from memory without the assistance of notes. Practice introductions and conclusions and don't let a presentation come to an awkward ending. A good ending is just as important as a catchy introduction. So rewrite boring or repetitive sections if necessary and do keep in mind that last minute script changes make, make you seem unprofessional and unprepared. Talent must be ready with script cue, card, teleprompts when taping or your recording begins. Guidelines for better videos. Uh, if we say that we must use a tripod or a solid camera support. The use of a tripod or a solid camera support is the mark of a professional. This is essentially important in close-ups. The exception is where you want to show a subjective camera effect, communicate uh, a fluid or unstable situation uh, or impart a documentary style effect or a new situation where you will miss the shot if you try to use a tripod. So it is always better to use a tripod. Rely on medium close-ups and close-ups for your basic visual material and wide shots should only be used for establishing or I'll say re-establishing shots and HDTV doesn't require the same close-up emphasis but for some time we will have to shoot with both formats in mind. Then eliminate shots that don't contribute to the project's goals or your basic story idea. The rule here is if in doubt, leave it out. So this is always better wherever we have a doubt in our mind. It means it is not required. That is why we are in doubt and we must leave it. And then cut away from a shot as soon as the basic information is conveyed, especially if the shot is a static one because if we'll keep on moving our camera, rolling over camera, then at the editing time, it will create problem and it will require more time. Then resist the temptation to keep the camera rolling and pan, zoom and tilt the camera to get from one shot to another. Zooms and pans are generally just lazy and time consuming ways of changing shots. A cut is always or almost always stronger and faster. Use pans and tilts when you need to reveal something or when you need to follow subject movement. And make sure your key subject person, your talent or your subject whosoever is in front of the camera is not wearing white or is against a white or very light background. And the sky windows, bright walls and lights in the picture are the biggest problem. The result is grayscale uh, compression or white clipping. If you cannot avoid this, you can manually open the camera's iris or engage the camera's backlight, backlight switch and carefully observe the effect while you make adjustments. And then use the auxiliary mic for interviews and never the built-in camera mic. Use the mic as close to the subject as possible. If you don't want the mic to be conspicuous, use a clip-on or personal mic. Hide the hand-held mic close to the subject or use an off-camera directional mic. Here you can see I'm using the 
small mic here, clip on mic here. Use instructional music as background for narration if needed, not vocal, rap or hip hop music. You cannot have two voice tracks going at the same time and expect the audience to follow both. Use actual video footage with interviews whenever possible. Do not just hold a shot of a talking head unless the person is very dramatic or animated. Whenever possible, supplement the interview footage with shots and help explain or illustrate what's being said. And if you're not expert, especially recruit someone to tape you if possible. While you can make an educational video by yourself, it can help to have someone working the camera so you can focus on the content that you want to convey. That is why I say that planning and scripting are the main major parts of a teacher on which he should or she should focus. In addition, your <coughs> cameraman can give you instant and uh, tenuous feedback and can pay attention to things such as lighting and sound etc. And then lastly, upload your video to your computer. After you have shot the necessary footage, you should upload the video and uh, make sure you save your raw footage as a separate document so that you can edit it and make changes in the future. We must remember that the most important phase of production is the <coughs> pre-production and production follows the pre-production. And here I would like to give you one exercise that you should carefully watch a video film and observe about cuts and short sizes. Then you will observe that where the cuts are there, how many, how, how long they are the short sizes. And also note down your observations and record all the shots as per your script. Write down a script which you have written in my earlier uh, uh, class or lesson. And then here you will record them. And uh, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, learning session. And with that, thank you so much.